The study of cryptids, or cryptozoology, deals with creatures only known through anecdotal evidence, from grainy footage to, he said, she said, rumored sightings. But what if I told you that there have been plenty of animals whose legends and lore have been proven to be true? Animals once thought to be cryptids, like today's Loch Ness Monster, Chupacabra, and Bigfoot. Do I have your attention yet? <laughs> awesome. Give us a like, sub, or follow because it just gets weirder from here. Oh, and stay tuned to the end to learn more about what this new show, Ripley's After Dark, is all about. In 1735, Carl Linnaeus attempted to classify Earth's living things, ultimately creating the foundation of modern zoology with his text Systema Naturae, breaking down stones, plants, and animals into classes, orders, genres, species, and varieties. He created the basis for the taxonomy still used today. Now, Linnaeus's research and observations did leave him with a few question marks, though. So he included suspect animals in his findings, akin to what we'd refer to as cryptids. On that suspect list, the narwhal, the pelican, and the antelope, just to name a few. So. It's only a matter of time for a cryptid like Bigfoot to slide out of our suspect category and into biology textbooks, right? As recently as the 20th century, animals thought to be fiction have been proven as fact. Scandinavian folklore warned sailors of the Kraken, however, the creature was revealed as the giant squid in 1853. And it wasn't until 2005 that we got to really see these sea monsters in action, when researchers filmed a live giant squid for the first time ever in its natural habitat. The animal struggled for hours before finally breaking free, losing an 18-foot long arm in the process. And then there is the existence of the Komodo dragon which wasn't confirmed until 1910 when Lieutenant Van Stein, Van Hunsbroek, went to Komodo Island after hearing some giant lizard lore. You know, with many cryptids that cross over, it's that local lore that really spurs the search. Allegedly extinct for millions of years, only documented through fossils, the coelacanth was well known to South Africans who called it Gumbasa or Mame. Then, in 1938, a museum curator was sorting through a local fisherman's catch, looking for curious creatures, when, what did she discover? She spotted the ancient coelacanth. Another mythical beast turned legit species is the ghost of the forest. Now, imagine a creature that has a tongue long enough to lick its own eyeballs, half zebra, half mystery, and hearing so supersonic that it can even elude the faintest sound of a predator vanishing into the forest like a ghost. Sounds spooky, but the nickname makes sense and all of the above characteristics, minus the zebra part, that's what the silly scientists assumed in the 1900s, are true for the species now known as the okapi, the giraffe's closest living relative. Okapis are extremely sensitive to sound and hide in the almost impenetrable thickets of the Congo. Now, some Bigfoot enthusiasts believe that their not-so-tender-footed friend could be a small, revived population of an extinct ape species, such as Gigantopithecus. Now, it doesn't seem that far-fetched when you look at these other species stories, as well as the discovery of the gorilla itself. It wasn't until 1847 that scientists officially identified the gorilla. That's the same year that the United States issued the first postage stamp. And believe it or not, the mountain gorilla subspecies, this guy right here, he remained a mystery until it was discovered in 1902. So could Bigfoot be next? It's estimated that 15 million different species live on our planet, but only 2 million of them are currently known to science. This past year alone, hundreds of new species were discovered around the world, from an iridescent burrowing snake species in Vietnam to the Papalanger, a new primate found living on an extinct volcano in Myanmar. The reclusive Papa Langer is an interesting case to look at when thinking of the possibility of a cryptid like Bigfoot. Already facing extinction, the Papa Langer is listed as critically endangered, with only 200 to 250 in the wild. Of that small population, they live in four isolated troops. Similarly, reported Bigfoot sightings tend to be bigger regional, with hotspots in Florida and the Pacific Northwest. In fact, Skamania County, Washington has labeled itself a Bigfoot refuge, granting the mythical species protection and making it a felony to kill. But since I call the Sunshine State home, let's take a deeper dive into the skunk ape. 
Like the Papalanger, could South Florida be one of only a handful of isolated Sasquatch populations? I had the opportunity to meet the Jacques Cousteau of the Skunk Ape Research Community, Dave Sheely. My name's Dave Sheely. I'm the lead researcher here at Skunk Ape Research Headquarters in the Everglades. I spend a lot of time out in the Everglades looking for tracks of skunk apes. That's what I do. Skunk apes are, if people see them, they think they've seen a Bigfoot. But in my research has shown that uh, there's some differences. For instance, most of the sightings occur in the tops of trees. And so they're tree climbers. You don't hear about the Bigfoot in a tree that often. And we have between seven to nine skunk apes that live here in the Everglades area. So there's not just one. The area Dave is referring to encompasses the 730,000 acre Big Cypress National Preserve and the neighboring 1.5 million acre Everglades National Park. Emphasizing the possibility, he notes most of it is rarely visited and things tend to decompose quickly, making it very feasible that a species could go unnoticed and leave virtually no evidence. Now, Dave has spent his life trying to prove the existence of the skunk ape and has had a few encounters himself. He spotted his first at the tender age of 10, but he's most proud of his 2000 encounter, which he caught on camera. In true Squatch fashion, it's grainy, shot from a distance, and leaves you googling gorilla costumes for a match, but Dave is convinced, and quite frankly, he doesn't care if you think it's real or not. Legends of large, ape-like beasts have been told all over the world for centuries, and it wasn't until the 1950s that the United States began to tell stories of its own Bigfoot, quickly popularized by the iconic Patterson and Gimlet footage released in 1967. Reported skunk ape sightings began in 1957, but the beast history goes back much further. The Muscogee and Seminole tribes that lived in the Everglades shared stories of the creature for hundreds of years. They call it Estacapcaki, or the tall man, and they say that he's the protector of the woods. Indigenous tribes in the Pacific Northwest also tend to have similar stories, alluding to the skunk ape's better known relative Bigfoot. When exploring cryptids crossing over to the realm of reality, we've been able to identify a couple of patterns. They exist in isolated, hard to navigate parts of the world, and local communities and native cultures tend to be in the know far in advance of the experts. Those facts allow me to put my trust in the research that people like Dave Sheely are doing and, dare I say it, make me want to believe. Our world is not yet fully explored, and there are so many secrets to be revealed. Will the existence of Bigfoot be one of them? Thanks for sticking around. We're shaking things up over here with four new series from your favorite host of Cool Stuff, Strange Things. Ripley's After Dark? Ripley's After Dark is gonna take you out of your comfort zone and really push the boundaries of Ripley's Believed or Not. We're gonna explore taboo topics, like if there's any truth to the legend of Countess Elizabeth Bathory bathing in blood, examine the remains of the Vampire of Dusseldorf, and learn how music might be a way for us to communicate with extraterrestrials. We're even gonna to try to get to the bottom of Lizzie Borden's murder weapon. All fact-based, all true, and all after dark. From the macabre to the unexplained, let me know in the comments what you want to watch on Ripley's After Dark. Sayonara, strange things.